Hi guys, and welcome to this video that is a beginner video where I'm going to explain and show how to paint a super easy motif in a negative painting style. And uh, as you may know, a negative painting style is when you are painting around the subject that you actually want to paint. So in, the, in this instance, we're going to paint leaves uh, just, you know, lying flat on the ground. Think about like a forest ground uh, in the autumn. There's leaves everywhere, just overlapping and uh, being beautiful. So we're going to to try to do that in different layers, but we're not going to paint the leaves. We're going to paint around the leaves. And I'm just drawing some leaf shapes here for a guide, and you should do the same. It's easier to uh, to do this technique if uh, if you have an idea of where to put the paint and uh, where to stop. So uh, definitely do that. And um, I'm just gonna erase my a little bit of my lines here, so uh, it's not shining to, through too much. There you go. Just a regular pencil in an HB pencil and a regular eraser as well and uh, you are good to go. You should be able to see the lines still, so hopefully there won't be a problem there. I'm just wetting my page here, and I want my... I could leave my leaves all white, and uh, this technique is perfect if you want to preserve some white areas like birch trees or something like that. But I do want my leaves to have some, some tone, um, so therefore I'm going to do a undercoat here of paint. So just regular clean water and just dipping in some sap green here. You can see how beautiful it spreads in the water. There's a lot of water on this and uh, that'll make the paint spread nice, nicely. Here's just a new gamboge, more sap green. And a bit of burnt umber as well. And you can vary this uh, as much as you like. This will be the lightest color in uh, in this painting. So the lightest leaves are going to be this wash of, of greens and browns. And it's a very warm uh, coat of paint here. And you don't have, I'm just spraying a little bit here. You don't have to paint the exact leaves and don't have to cover up all the leaves. You can see some of them are very little covered and that's totally fine. We're going to let it dry and come back to it. And now you can see how dry uh, or how light it actually dried. And that is a beautiful wash. And uh, I can see I have had a lot of water on top of the page where it's uh, created some blooms. And, and I like that texture, so that's really cool. And as you can see, I'm just uh, beginning to paint my second layer of paint and just painting around the leaves. Now it's important that you can actually see the leaves through the, the wash. So uh, when you're painting the first wash, make sure that you are not painting it too thick. You want it to uh, dry up so you can actually see the 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 strokes that you, or the, the shapes that you, you uh, drew before. So just painting around the leaves here. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please uh, subscribe and you'll be notified when I post other videos. I post almost every week, so um, totally do that. And there's a lot of goodies there if you want to check that out as well. So. Just a tip, if you are if you are bored on a Saturday afternoon or something like that, just go and uh, check that out. I'm just using my brush here to soften the edges on on the side of the painting. I don't want the edges to be too hard, so I'm just softening with a damp brush and being careful not to let my edges dry here. Uh, also in the middle of the painting. 
and you can see I'm switching between different colors. I want my my second coat of color here to be uh, the same colors as before, the sap green and uh, the burnt umber. I'm leaving out the new gamboge almost because I kind of wanted that to be some sunshine that was just shining through uh, from the from the lower lower layer. And now we can let it dry again and come back to it. Now that it's dry, I can go in and uh, draw uh, draw some new shapes of leaves. And this time it's going to be a little bit harder to to see the lines, but uh, I think we are good to go at the moment, so that's okay. Try to let some of the leaves overlap, so it gives a format or uh, a dimension, some depth. Uh, which is really cool and let them just be angled in uh, different ways and now we can go in again do exactly the same just paint around the subjects both the new leaves and the old leaves and create a even darker tone here so now we have the first layer of paint is uh, shining through in the lightest leaves the second layer of paint is shining through in the second pair of leaves and now we have the, the next coat that's going to shine through the third <laughs> layer of leaves. No problem. Um, here the paint is just running a little bit into the, the leaves and that's totally fine. You uh, don't have to be super super careful. You can always just smooth it over with uh, your brush and just using a clean water and a damp brush. Then you'll be totally fine. And you don't have to to draw around every single leaf. You can you can uh, totally leave out half a shape or just paint up to one line or something like that. But the the brain will kind of uh, do the puzzle um, when it sees a half shape. Um, it's it's uh, actually a really cool way to create some interest in your painting. You can see I have some some shapes on the right side that's not entirely defined, but that is still uh, easy to see as a leaf. So you don't have to be super uh, careful with this. And just turn your your paper around as much as you need. There's a lot of wet areas <laughs> when you're painting like this and you don't want to put your hand on top of it. So just turn around and turn the, the paper uh, as much as you need. And look how deep the color is getting uh, doing this. It's so cool. I really love this technique and it's perfect for a lot of things and often use it for for branches or something like that when you have a lot of branches in the in a cluster or you know a bush where you want to create that depth then this is perfect. And yes, I did speed up this video quite a lot because it's a little bit boring to see in the in a complete real time situation here. But it's, so it is a little bit speeded up. It's not a lot. Now we can let it dry again and uh, come back to it in a second. Now it's dry again, and we can repeat what we did before. Now we can see it's a lot darker, so again the the pencil will be even harder to see. But I really like that the, the pencil gives you some guides, especially if you're a beginner you want to focus more on on the technique and not as much as on, on the motif and where to put the shapes. 
So it's good to kind of separate it by doing the shapes first and then you can just focus on the paint and the water to move the way you want to. So I'm just again trying to overlap and some places I'm going to see if I can I can kind of connect some of the the shapes so uh, there's uh, even more overlapping going on. And now I'm just going to go in and repeat what we did before. It looks almost like these are in water, don't you think? Like there's uh, this these are leaves laying on the at the bottom of of a not a lake but more like a oh maybe a lake. I'll go with lake. Okay, I'm going in with a pretty dark color as you can see now. And this is uh, because now we have our the final layer and I really wanted this to be super dark so we have a contrast between the the lighter colors and the dark colors. And here I'm actually going in with a paint gray as well. Uh, I wanted to add some uh, a cool color to to this to kind of create an interest because it's very very warm at the moment. So I think a overcoat of a cooler color here can uh, can do some interesting things. I'm still mixing it up with the other color as well, but I am mixing in a little bit of paint gray. Also, paint gray can uh, create a darker tone than uh, the others can, so it's easier to get it nice and dark. So there's more reasons to do it. You don't have to, of course. There's no pressure. You just use what you feel like uh, using. But I like how it it kind of uh, contrasts a little. Just softening the edges here with a damp brush. You can see I'm being careful. I'm using my the tip of my brush when I'm painting close to the edge of the the leaves, but using the body of my brush to soften the edges and just smushing out the the paint. So it's a good exercise to use your brush. And if you want other brush exercises, check out my other video on brush control. That. That'll take you through uh, some, some nice techniques if you want to master that brush control. And seriously, it's worth it. Even if it's a little boring to do the, the exercises, it's totally worth it to, to do it sometimes. It's like warming up to a marathon. You can't really run a marathon without doing some warm-up runs before. I really love the depth of this painting. It's uh, it's in the in the beginning you can't see how uh, the result is going to turn out, but as we build the layers, it really gets a beautiful depth and uh, and color, and I really love that. It's so beautiful. This technique is such a fun one, and it's it's quite easy when you are you have tried it a couple of times. And if you want to Google it to see more, there's this is called negative technique, negative painting technique. Yes, you can totally Google that. I didn't make it up, as I did some other things. I think in the brush control video I actually made up a brush uh, stroke, but uh, you can check that out. It's called a twisted stroke. Yes, fancy. This is turning out a little bit dark here. Try to lift a little bit of it and uh, just see if I can use some of that color here. It's a little dark. There you go. 
go. Okay, that helped a little. I think I'm going to do a little bit of negative painting inside the leaves to show the veins. Um, so I'm just doing these, this pattern. It's totally a regular, a regular uh, leaf pattern, uh, just to to show that there is veins and uh, give some life to these leaves here. Just using sap green and then a little bit of paint gray here in the in the edge, and it'll bleed into the the greens um, and just show a little bit of curve on the leaves. Just doing pattern, pattern, pattern. You don't have to do that, um, but I do like it, especially with these very bright shapes because they are not that uh, leaf-like, but they have this beautiful white uh, or light tone that's uh, going to work with these patterns. So. Um, I like to do it and you don't have to do it with all of them. I recommend you don't do it with all of them. Just a few to to show some some variety and uh, some interest. You don't even have to do it in both sides of the leaf. You can just do it in one area or two. It's up to you. Here you go. And I think we uh, can call this painting done. Thank you for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video. Remember to, to subscribe. Bye.